this is Arts Alive, and it's a special production, a remote show. We're coming to you uh, live to tape, I guess, from the Chehalem Cultural Center here in Newburgh. And my guest today is Karen White, and Karen is the Education and Outreach Coordinator here at the Center. So, welcome. Thank you. I, um, this is a beautiful building. It is a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. I hope that um, people watching this, if they haven't been here, will be here soon to just sort of take in how much there really is. Mm -hmm. And all the renovation uh, from the studios themselves, because oh. that used to be the central school. So mm -hmm. a lot of community members come in and actually talk about how that was my classroom oh, really? such and such years ago uh -huh. and how nice it is that it's changed. So. Well, you know, it's true because you do kind of get a sense, I suppose, that this is, when I was standing here waiting to start, I thought, yeah, this is like a really cool classroom with a nice high ceilings, and mm -hmm. but, but obviously beautiful hardwood floors and... You know, just such a nice mm -hmm. space for art. Absolutely. Well, and actually, that's part of the artwork of, of the center. So, so Karen, why don't we talk a little bit about you and sort of your background as an artist and maybe how you came to be here. Um, background as an artist, um, I've been doing sculpture and clay sculpture and photography for about 15 years now. Um, I was a resident artist out at the Sitka Center for Art and Ecology uh, about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And after that experience, I decided Oregon was it and had to move here from Colorado. So moved out here about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Spent almost three years um, out on the coast as a um, resident visiting artist and caretaker at the Nestucca Bay National Wildlife Refuge outside of Pacific City. Mm. And then uh, have worked here for about the past year and a half and so transitioned to Newburgh just recently. Uh, to to be here full time. So. so you were doing that commute from the coast. I was. Yeah. was it was hard. Of it was course. hard to leave, but it, it was hard yeah. to do that at the same time. You know, it's so interesting because you came from Colorado mm -hmm. and had an, an experience that most people who've lived here forever would never think about doing. You know, being a, a caretaker out there at the mm -hmm. at the wildlife preserve. Uh huh. It, it was uh, fabulous because, you know, um, I was not only the on site caretaker, but I really brought this infusion of creativity into the, the programs that they had for the environmental education. So t taking a creative approach to um, what was there and how to interpret it. So it wasn't only about biology and science. So it was really, it was a fantastic opportunity and something that when I moved to um, Oregon from Colorado, that was kind of what my main focus is that I really wanted to blend my life, art, creativity, and my job all as, as one. And so I, I, I'm kind of fortunate in that that's, you know, I did that on the refuge and I'm doing that here at the cultural center. So it's a really nice, a nice place to be, so. That's really amazing. So now, do you have a background as an educator or did that just kind of come about as part of your work as an um, artist? Well, I have a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Ceramics mm -hmm. um, that I got in Colorado. And for, gosh, 15 years now, I've been in and out of public schools teaching okay. uh, Montessori. Oh, um, K through okay. 12 Montessori program, and mm -hmm. then um, community college also, and community programs. So, so I've been teaching for quite a while um, in diverse, you know, community organizations and programs, and and always with the arts. So, so when you were going to school and getting your your fine arts degree, did you have a sense that you wanted to teach, or were you thinking that you were going to be an artist <laughs> and just pr producing work and doing shows and things like that? Yeah, way back, um, you know, getting out of high school. Uh, Budgets were getting cut for the arts and mm -hmm. programs and everything, you know, somewhat not not unfamiliar to what some of the things are that are happening right now. But uh, I remember in high school they said, "Why do you want to be an artist? Why do you want to go to art school? <laughs> you know, you'll never make any money. What do you want to do? Be a teacher?" And I was like, "No, I don't want to teach. I want to be a full-time artist. You know, it's, I want to do art all the time." And um, you know, I went to school for architecture and you know interior design and I looked at all you know marketing of mm -hmm. all these things that you know you can make a living off of and it really wasn't my passion and my passion is more about not only being an artist but that sharing and that extension of being an artist so I, in my opinion you can be an artist or you can be an educator or you can be both and so I really feel you know pretty honored that I get to do both you know, I get to, to make art myself but mm -hmm. that to me that sharing process of not only sharing you know the knowledge and skills that I have with others but sharing my artistic process with them and my work with them so it's it's really a nice balance. 
So. You know, it's sort of interesting because I, I think about when I was in high school and my best friend in high school said, oh, you know, I'm going to be an art major mm -hmm. in college. And everybody sort of laughed like, oh, yeah. you know, what are, what are you going to do gonna with do? that degree? Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure you probably heard the same mm -hmm. thing. And, and then it's sort of like the liberal studies degree. You yeah. know, it's, it, it's, That's so easy. Oh, you it's know. so easy. <laughs> and you can do anything, mm -hmm. but, you know, but nothing in particular. Mm -hmm. So I think what, what it does is it allows you, as you say, to sort of find your passion. Mm -hmm. And really one of the explore. things I think is great about what you're doing is that, you know, not only are you teaching people the art of producing ceramics or ceramic art, mm -hmm. but you're also sort of modeling what a life can be in terms an of mm -hmm. an artist, a working artist, an educator, somebody who's actually supporting themselves, doing work that mm -hmm. they're very passionate about mm -hmm. and and it's okay. <laughs> you well, know? And, and you don't have to be an accountant or something. Right, yeah. right. And not only that, but um, in addition to that aspect is is you know a different awareness and appreciation you know there's mm -hmm. so many times where you know I, i've worked in numerous galleries and they'd come and say oh this is so expensive i could do that yeah go ahead go ahead and so some of my students are you know they especially in making pottery pieces you know when they get on the wheel for the first time it's it's really kind of scary almost and mm -hmm. they have no idea how much balance and and you know when you're centering clay it's not a centering thing of like oh I'll just get down there and center clay. It it's really more of this this balance about things and so they they come away with a different appreciation and awareness for what people do make you know and rather they want to attempt to um, follow in a style or just have an appreciation um, they look at what they use every day in a very different manner so you know you take this bowl out that you've created out of your cupboard there's this this history and this oh, this really nice tactile mm -hmm. personal um, relationship and intimacy with these objects, and so mm -hmm. then you get to share them on your dinner table with someone else, and so it really becomes about how art blends into our everyday lives versus you can go to the museum and see you know a Picasso or something or you know any other master you know artist, but you can't have this this very intimate personal connection with it, and so what you know being a teacher and an artist also there is that connection and it's really a nice a nice balance and a nice you know blend of how how this all comes together so that's that's part of the fun of it you know and the, the passion comes through because you know i tell my students all the time i still take classes and they're like why you've got a degree and you've been teaching and you, you know we like you as a teacher or whatever and i said well that doesn't matter you know because someone else might show me something that i have no idea about mm -hmm. or they might give me an idea of something to try and then i can bring it back to you and and so that that cycle just keeps kind of happening, you know, throughout. So it's really, it's very, it's comforting, and it, you know, you follow your passion, but it, it's rewarding, and there's joy of it, and there's joy when I extend something to my my students, and they catch on, and they have that aha moment, and mm -hmm. you know, they really enjoy what they're doing, and and uh, and they keep coming back to it. It's great. <laughs> so. So, obviously, I passed, when I was coming up, the ceramic studio mm -hmm. is very beautiful. It's mm -hmm. large, it's well lit, it looks like it's very well appointed. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many ceramic classes do you, do you teach here at the center? M me personally? Well, in general, how um, many are offered? I, take, I teach six. Six? <laughs> six different classes right now. Each week? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, okay. so I teach three um, separate kids' classes and I teach three separate adult classes. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's another instructor here right now, and uh, he teaches uh, one teen class of clay. Mm -hmm. and, and we're at a point where we're ready to expand again, too. So, I, you know, all artists and teachers out there, <laughs> feel free to, to contact the, the Cultural Center. Um, I don't know if I give the website now or... It, you, uh, as long as it doesn't say .com, you can give it. It's .org. Um, okay, perfect. It's uh, www.chehalemculturalcenter.org. Okay. And they can definitely contact me there. Um, and uh, send in a proposal, but it's kind of nice because you know I do teach a lot of the ceramics here. I teach ceramics and photography, and then I do a lot of sculpture and the outreach. But it's getting to a point where I just, I personally can't do it all. <laughs> oh, so, oh no! And yeah. you know, one of the things that I was the thinking diversity. about when you were talking is so when you're you're saying the different children's classes and the different adult classes, is that like beginner, intermediate, advanced, that mm -hmm. sort of thing? So people that are brand new to clay, oh, or porcelain. Mm -hmm. um, 
No, it's we, all levels, all abilities. So You know, I know many people watching this show may be thinking, oh my gosh, it's already May, mm. and next month is June, and what are we going to do with the kids all summer? Ah. You know, and so I wondered if you might want to talk about perhaps things that you have off, you're offering Absolutely. this summer. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the classes, and we've got clay classes for kids. Um, I'm doing some photography exploration. We've got uh, drawing and um, creature sculpture, and... Um, the creatures aren't necessarily monster driven, it's all about fantasy and mm -hmm. uh, Kurt Shirelli is teaching that, he's a McMinnville artist. Okay. Um, a fabulous style of um, realism and hyperrealism in some of his work but also that distortion for fantasy and illustration of things. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be doing a drawing class and a sculpture class for the kids. Um, we've got a beading class with Kathleen Price, um, I'm teaching ceramics and photography. And uh, Pam Nichols is doing um, a hand in hand encaustic, so that's an adult and child class. Oh, interesting. Um, and then we've got the little itty bitty tots doing singing time with, with Sue. So that's just for the kids, but the adults, on the other hand, there's painting classes, there's um, drawing and sculpture, we've got Tai Chi coming up. Oh, okay. Um, so, really, a nice mixture of, of classes that are coming uh, into the summer. Um, one of the, the highlights of the summer would be the Raku classes. I know it, it oh. sounds like I'm tooting my own programs no, no, here, no, but... No, no, because I, I want to hear about those. Raku is really a mm -hmm. fun and uh, very engaging and, and interactive process. So basically, uh, you make ceramic pieces mm -hmm. out of a Raku clay, which is something that can handle the thermal shock. Um, and then you glaze them and you put them in our trash can kiln. <laughs> okay. And it's a rapid firing process. So you, mm -hmm. heat, the, you heat the work up really quick, mm -hmm. and then at red hot temperatures, which is about in the 18 to 1900 range. And the garbage can you, is glowing. It's glowing and we reach in <laughs> red hot. Not, not everybody, but we reach in and grab the pots and then basically there's a, um, a separate uh, bin that's been prepared with different combustibles. And so you, you literally catch the pot on fire and then you contain what's happening in there. So it traps all the carbons and, and, and all the glazes do really interesting things. So it's, it's very lively. So we've got a couple of workshops, um, Monday through Thursday workshops where we fire on Saturday. And then we have the Raku barbecue, which is first Friday art walk. Uh, so no, I think you, we you better come out and film that. Definitely come out. What and film could be that. more exciting yeah. than a, you know an on fire garbage can filled with art? <laughs> yes, and and actually the beauty of the the mini workshops and the firing days and the, the first Friday art walk, um, especially the fr first Friday art walk, uh, that's called the Raku Barbecue. So we'll have Taste Eight Hundred Eight here, which is Hawaiian uh, barbecue and oh, grilled teriyaki. So they're doing their own fire and thing, the color and we're doing all fire and the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And so you don't even have to come and make a piece. We'll have a bunch of pieces actually made. You purchase the piece and then you do the firing process. So it's okay. really a very fun, interactive activity oh, for I our Oh, I think walk. that's yeah. great. So that's the first Friday in August. Oh, so in August? In August. Just August? Just August, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is not, uh, you, this would be a lot to coordinate on a monthly basis. Yes, yes. Oh, that's, well, that's something really good to think about. Yeah. This will be plenty of time so people can mark their calendar and plan on that. <laughs> so Absolutely. let me ask you this, you're also, also teaching photography. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something that you've always done, photography, or is that something that maybe developed out of the wildlife refuge? It actually de developed out of my residency because oh, I'm a sculptor. A and I was going out and, you know, this is all new terrain for me. And so I kept collecting things as inspiration. And at a certain point, I thought, I can't collect all this stuff. I have to, I just need to take pictures. And so since I don't sketch as an artist, which is something that a lot of people are like, you're an artist, you don't sketch. My camera is my sketchbook. Mm -hmm. And so I, I began taking um, a lot of macro photography shots. And I'd send them back home to people and, and other friends and artists. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, your photography is amazing. So cool. I base this photography, both for kids and adults, um, these workshops on the same style that I do. This is not about f-stops and shutter speeds and lighting and aperture. It, it's not about the technical aspects of photography. It's really about exploration and composition and learning how to shoot your subject. So it's a very playful, um, exploratory type photography. Oh, how fun. And I get you out really looking at things in a different perspective. Sometimes we're crawling on our hands and knees, you know, bug's eye view versus, you know, mm -hmm. the, the standard of people taking snapshots. Mm -hmm. So it's a very fun interactive workshop. And then down the road, we in the fall, we will have some technical photography if others are interested in that. But this mm -hmm. is more about the exposure of it. So um, it's, a, it's a nice way to to come out and, and learn about it, you know, put your camera on auto, or if you have some other, you know, skills already, 
but it's really about the composition and capturing those those details and, and especially the textures of gosh of nature out here. It's just it's phenomenal. So. <laughs>